hey guys welcome back to my channel it's your girl and just so y'all know i did go back to dunkin donuts and this time i just got me two donuts two original glazed donuts i just took a bite out of crime on that one i'm sorry i just hit my work phone <laughs> so i did get that i shouldn't have did that that was very not classy of me to bite and talk to y'all excuse me so I've been listening to worship music this morning and it's really calmed me down because I wake up, I pray, and I'm, I'm, it's like, I'm trying to figure out my it routine. I feel better as I take me a shower, I read my word, but I need an it routine because sometimes I get thrown off, like my husband be home or whatever the case may be. With that being said, I was listening to KCJ and she was singing, fill me up. And it goes a little something like this. Y'all forgive me because I be forgetting words to a song when I'm singing. Don't know why it happens, but it happens. And it goes, you provide the fire. I provide the sacrifice. You provide the spirit. And I will open up inside. Mm -hmm. You provide the fire. I provide the sacrifice. Oh, you provide the spirit. I will open up inside. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Which I feel like is so important in our lesson because we're talking about David. And we talked about John the Baptist who was in the womb filled with the Holy Spirit. So I feel like that song is so befitting to read these Sunday school lessons because God's making promises, but he's filling people with his spirit as he's making these promises. Because we have to realize that we cannot do this stuff on our own. Yes, David did a lot of things. And as we get in this lesson, you're going to see why he didn't even allow David to build the temple. It wasn't really because of what David could do, because we know God for who he is. But he's like, I'm going to leave you to do what I have you to do. And I'm going to have your offspring, though. Don't 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 fret because a part of you still going to do it. But it's just going to be through your offspring. OK, so we're in lesson we're on Friday and we're going to be reading out the scripture Psalms 89, 39, uh -oh, yeah, 89 scripture 19 through 39 and then it's a long scripture. So y'all bear with me as I read through it because I don't know who wants to just read this, but I have to read it. It's just a part of it. You spoke once in a vision to your faithful ones and said, I have a granted to help a warrior. I've exalted one chosen from the people. I have found David, my servant. I have anointed him with my sacred oil. My hand will always be with him and my arm will strengthen him. The enemy will not oppress him. The wicked will not afflict him. I will crush his foes before him and strike those who hate him and strike those. Oh, I'm sorry. And my faithfulness and love will be with him. And through my name, his horn will be exalted. I will extend his power to the sea and his right hand to the rivers. He will call to me. You are my father, my, my God, the rock of my salvation. I will also make him my firstborn. Wow. Greatest of the kings of the earth. I will always preserve my faithful love for him and my, my covenant with him will endure. I will establish his line forever. His throne as long as heavens last. If his sons abandon my instruction and do not live by my ordinances, if they dishonor my statutes and do not keep my commands, then I will call their rebellion to account with a rod, their iniquity with blows. But I will not withdraw my faithful love from him or betray my faithfulness. I will not violate my covenant or change what my lips have said. Once and for all, I have sworn an oath by my holiness. I am God. I don't have to lie. So by my holiness, I have given you an oath. I will not lie to David. His offspring will continue forever. His throne, like the sun before me, like the moon established forever, a faithful witness in the sky. But you have 
spurned and rejected him. You have become enraged with your anointed. You have repudiated the covenant with your servant. You have completely dishonored his crown. Wow. So we're going to read this lesson today, y'all. Y'all see how God was telling him and basically telling him what he was going to do and how much he loved David and how much he, because he loved him so much, he was going to bless his offspring. But here's the craziness of it all. When God had already explained last, uh, yesterday who it was going to be. Okay. But he just puts a stamp of approval in different, uh, verses and books of the Bible, because we know that God is repetitive. He says things over and over because he wants us to get it. And you know how some people say you got to read the whole Bible. And then there's some that say you don't. And I feel like God already know what we're going to do in this world. So he makes it everywhere in the Bible. So just in case we don't read Revelations, just in case we don't read Daniel, just in case we don't read First Kings or First Chronicles. Here, I'm going to give it to you in Psalms. OK, here we go. The promise of an eternal kingdom. Second Samuel 7, 16. On this note of covenant faithfulness, the Lord concluded his message to David through Nathan, a prophet. His house, kingdom, and throne would be established and remain fixed forever. Because of apostasy, there were, were long stretches during which no king occupied David's throne. But there were also a David Davidic <laughs> descendant available to occupy it. David's dynasty culminated when Jesus, God's son, and David's son appeared and claimed the kingdom. Through him alone could the kingdom be eternal, as Gabriel and told Mary. Luke 1, 32 through 33. The climax of Jesus' reign is still future, awaiting his return. Reference Isaiah 11, 1 through 10. Daniel 7, 13 through 14. Revelations 19 through 11. 19 11 through 16 but its fulfillment is just as certain as his first advent for it is based on the covenant faithfulness of god of david mm. yeah so we're gonna get right into these questions and i don't know if y'all want to look at them but I, i'm gonna go ahead and read them real quick like and then i'm gonna answer them i don't want y'all to like see all this flipping because it's real distracting when that happens okay the first question is why did David want to build a temple for the Lord? Why was he not the right person? Do, 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 do. Okay. David implied to Nathan, the prophet, that he intended to build a proper house for God. And Nathan hastily agreed. Okay. He hastily agreed. But David was not the one to do it. The Lord... The Lord was not opposed to the idea, but he reserved the right to designate both the person and the time to do it. David was unsuitable for building a temple because he was a man of war who shed much blood. And then this talks about that in first Kings five and three and first Chronicles 22, seven through eight and 28, two, two, three. Okay. Two, how had God lived amongst his people before David's time? Now, it says in a tent, in a tabernacle, it can be translated as in a tent as a dwelling, which I did learn that in Leviticus. There, God walked with Israel as they traversed the desert. OK. Three, summarize what the Lord had done for David to this point. Now, this is long, y'all, but I'm going to give y'all a little snippy. OK. It said God first review he had done what he had done for David to bring him to this point, he referred to him as a servant, okay? A title reserved for a select few, such as Abraham, Moses, and Caleb. Although it appears to be a humbling title, it actually was a term of honor, okay? To raise him to this position, God had taken him from the sheep coat pasture, where he had been caring for sheep. From the humble stats, the Lord had promoted David to be ruler over all people of Israel, yeah, that is a big deal. So, oh, David, what did God plan to do in the future for David and Israel? Will Israel's goal, when is, will Israel's goal be reached? And I'm going to save these other questions for tomorrow. So we're going to read this, is the last question I'm going to read. And it says, 
The promise of the land for Israel had been a prominent feature of God's covenant with Abraham. David's conquest had secured much of his territory, but peace was still not a reality. It would remain for Solomon to achieve this promised goal. But our text implies that Israel's rest in their own land would be permanent. They would move no more and their enemies would afflict them no more. This was not achieved in Solomon's day since they then have been ex exiled twice and enemies still threaten them to this day. Later prophets continue to tell of a final restoration and peace of Israel. And this has not yet been completed. It remains for the Messiah to accomplish. I hope you guys enjoyed this lesson on today because I certainly did. And I just want y'all to have a blessed week. We will meet again on Sunday. Lord, I thank you. Let's pray, y'all. Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you for this time. I thank you for this moment. God, you dwell in this place. Dwell in their temples, God. Dwell within them. Dwell within their homes. Dwell within my homes. Right now, in the name of Jesus, let us be hearers of your word, listeners of your word. Not just hearing the word and letting it go through one ear and out the other. But God, we ask that it's implanted in our souls and in our hearts and in our minds. And, our, and to make us have a right spirit. David said that he needs a right spirit. Lord, we need one too. Lord, we thank you for everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.